Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Smart previews in Lightroom. Do you use them? Should you use them? In this video, I'm going to answer that question. Let me state at the top that not everybody needs to use smart previews. The people that will find smart previews to be beneficial are those of us that keep our images on an external hard drive. Now, most often, those of us that use laptops or MacBooks but keep our images on an external hard drive, you may find yourself in a situation where smart previews are not only beneficial but required. Now, personally, I do keep my images on an external hard drive, although at the moment, I happen to be on my iMac. I'm not on my MacBook. But still, it's the same thing applies. Because those images are on that external hard drive, I may run into a situation where I'll need smart previews. Now, right now, I don't have that hard drive plugged in, but I have Lightroom open. Look over on the left-hand panel of the library module. You'll notice that every folder, the little icon for the folder, you'll see in the lower right hand corner, there's a question mark. That's because Lightroom cannot find those folders. Of course it can't. That external hard drive is not plugged in. Also down in the film strip, each of the images has an exclamation point in the top right hand corner. That's because Lightroom cannot find the image. But most importantly, if I go over the develop module and you'll see at the top, it says the file cannot be found. But on the right hand side, all the controls are grayed out. I'm not able to edit any of these images because Lightroom cannot find the image. Well, that's when a smart preview comes into play. If you build smart previews for your images, you'll be able to edit them when you don't have the hard drive with the images available. So let's do this all right but first of all to build the smart preview i have to have the image available so i'm going to plug in my external hard drive right now and once it spins up and gets mounted by the operating system what you'll see is uh, basically all these exclamation points will go go away uh, the file could not be found warning at the top will go away and over on the right hand side all of this will come alive and I'll be able to edit the image. Now it's just going to take a second for that hard drive to spin up and get mounted by the operating system and it just did. You can see now all those little question marks that were in the corner of those folders are gone, all the exclamation points are gone, and most importantly over on the right hand side everything is now active and I'm able to edit the image. Of course I can. It sees the image now. But let's say you just want to build one smart preview. Super easy to do. Click on the image you want to build the smart preview for. And then on the right hand side, whether you're in the library or the develop module, you'll see that it says original photo, photo underneath the histogram. Just click on that. And when you do, it will prompt you to build a smart preview for that photo. So we will. We'll build the smart preview. You'll see there's progress bar. It created the smart preview. It's telling you click OK. Now you'll notice that it says original and smart preview. So if I disconnect the hard drive again, I'll be able to edit this one image. But you don't have to do this image by image by image. You could do a bunch of images or build smart previews for a bunch of images at the same time. Let's do it. Let's click on this first one that it doesn't have a smart preview for. Hold in the shift key, click on the last one. So all of the images in the film strip are now selected. To build smart previews for all of these, I could go back over here and click there. Or I could, while in the library module, go up to library and then down to previews and then over to build smart previews. You also could discard smart previews and I'm going to show you that in a moment. But let's build the smart previews for these seven images. Now there's eight in the film strip but I already built one. So we're going to build it for the other seven. You can see then the top left hand side there's a progress bar. It now created the smart previews for those seven photos. So there are now smart previews for all of these images. And I'm able to um, then, now, if I disconnect this hard drive, and I will. Let's close down Lightroom Classic. 
I have to close it because it locks the hard drive when it accesses the image images so I won't be able to eject it while Lightroom is open so I close Lightroom down and I'm right clicking on it I'm ejecting my it's I call the hard drive Lightroom that contains my Lightroom images and it's telling me that Lightroom is using the um, hard drive I have Lightroom closed sometimes you'll get this I'm just gonna force eject it won't hurt it and all right so I have that uh, hard drive now ejected Lightroom will not be able to find those images. As a matter of fact, I'm going to unplug it. I know you can't see me doing it, but I just unplugged it from the computer and I'll go back to Lightroom. We'll open it up and you'll notice uh, it, when we're in the library module on the left hand side, all those folders have the question marks again, but these eight images that I built the smart previews, they don't have those exclamation points on them. Also, if I go to the develop module, You'll notice all the controls are active and I'm able to do edits on the image so I could edit any and all of these images. I could just do edits to my heart's delight on these images. Now you're probably wondering, okay, the reason why I have my images on an external hard drive is because my internal hard drive isn't that large. It cannot handle a lot of images. Well, Smart previews are very, very small con when compared to the original RAW files. Most original RAW files are between like 30 and 60 megabits in size. Unless you have a super high resolution camera, they could be approaching 70, 80 megabits in size, right? Or if you don't compress them, some like my Sony A7R4 RAW files are over 100 megabits in size if I don't compress them. So they're humongous. Smart previews, though, are actually DNG images that use lossy compression that are 2056 pixels on the long side. Now there's not a folder on your computer that contains your smart previews. The smart previews are kept in the Lightroom catalog. Specifically, now I have eight images. Let's take a note. I have eight images that have smart previews for them. I'm going to minimize Lightroom. I'm going to go to my finder and I keep my uh, where is it? Right there. All right. This is the actual file that contains the smart previews right here. It's called smartpreviews.lrdata. Look at it. It's 8 megabits in size. That file has all 8 of my smart previews in it. And you can see they average about 1 megabit in size each. So it really does reduce the size of the image. It allows you to get a good edit on the image. You could even export the image. Now it is only 2,056 megabytes on the long edge. So you won't be able to get a super large um, export from it, but you could get an export that will work on the internet just fine. Um, even, you know, make small prints with it, but you won't be able to, let's say if I wanted to, you know, do a large 20 by 30 print or something like that. I wouldn't be able to do that with a smart preview, uh, but otherwise you will be able to. Now, you did all your smart previews, you plug the hard drive back in, let's say, or you know, let's say you were traveling and you wanted to do some editing on the airplane, but you didn't want to bring your external hard drive with you. Before you leave, build smart previews for all the images you want to edit while on the airplane. Then. When you're on the airplane, you don't have your hard drive with you, you'll, you'll be able to edit all those images. When you get home, plug the external hard drive back in. Now that's what I'm going to do now. And once you plug the external hard drive back in, you'll be able to then do exports at super high resolution. So you'll be able to, um, you know, use Lightroom like you always do. No problem at all. But you may be thinking, well, I still want to reclaim that hard drive space that had the smart previews on it. So after you plug the hard drive back in and you can see that it is uh, it is mounted. So here it is. It did get mounted. I still have this uh, smart previews.lr data file with 8 megabits in size. So um, everything's fine now. The edits are saved. Everything's good. I didn't have to do anything, really. I just built the smart previews, edited, edited the images I wanted to edit, and I really was done. Um, once I put that hard drive back in though, and let's say I want to get rid of the smart previews, 
I don't want them anymore. Go to the folder that contains the images or the collection that contains the images, or go to the main root folder. I'll just go up here to the main root folder that contains all my images, all 75,987 of my images. Then go up to library, down to previews, then down to discard smart previews. Click that. It's going to ask you, do you want to discard all of them or just one, the one I'm on, or all of them? I'm going to discard all of them. Now it will filter through your library and try to find each of the images that has a smart preview. And it may take a while, especially when you have 75,987 images in your Lightroom catalog. But uh, what I'll do is I'll pause the video and when this is done, you'll see that uh, that file that was eight megabits in size will be zero megabits in size because all the smart previews will be gone. Okay, it discarded all the smart previews. I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to go to the folder in the library that contains this image. So we're back with my eight original images. And you'll notice when I click on any of them on the right hand side, it just says original photo. Now it doesn't say original photo plus smart preview because the smart previews are gone. I'm going to close down Lightroom. And you'll notice now that uh, file smart previews.lr data zero bytes. So the smart previews were just averaging one megabit in size. Now they're gone. Um, so uh, what I'll do is let me eject the Lightroom again. It may warn me, but let's see if it ejects it. Yeah, we'll force eject. Force eject. Okay, it's ejected. I'm even going to unplug it. And we'll go back to Lightroom. And let it open and you'll see I, I'll have all those question marks on the corner of all the folder icons on the left hand panel. I'll have the exclamation points are back. And if I go to the develop module, I won't be able to edit anything. So like I said, not everyone needs to use smart previews and actually most of us don't use to need to use smart previews all the time. Now, if you do find that you do need to use smart previews all the time, you can build them during your import. If I go to the library module and click on the import button, it's going to warn me because I can't find the folder. Oh, it didn't warn me. But anyway, in the top, oh, there it warned me. I was waiting for it. Didn't disappoint. On the right hand side, there is a checkbox for building smart previews. So you could build the smart previews as you're importing images into Lightroom. But I don't think most of us need to do that. We just need to do it for specific situations when we know we won't be having that external hard drive with us. So hopefully that helps you better utilize smart previews. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>